Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob. The uh, purpose of this study is to make you think and expose that most churches and pastors exist to hide the truth of God, not to reveal it. You see, most pastors and churches are what are called 501c3 IRS-approved, tax-exempt corporations. They're a business. And they work for the government, you know, the same government that believes that sodomites should uh, be able to get married, that abortion is a woman's right to choose, that the Church of Satan has uh, should have freedom of religion, well, you don't get that stuff from the Bible. You get that stuff from Supreme Court justices that are going to meet the Supreme Judge one day at the White Throne Judgment, most likely. So, let's... But Well, before we start getting into the Bible study, I am seriously considering leaving YouTube. My comments don't show up. When I go to other people's channels, oftentimes, I'm having people write me and tell me that I post videos and they don't see the notifications. So, I mean, you know, I've got over 2,000 subscribers. And I have people saying, oh, I went to your channel to make a comment and ask you, why haven't you been putting out videos? And I see you put out several videos. But YouTube's not telling us. And... People are telling me they've been unsubscribed. And they're like, well, I didn't unsubscribe from you. So I'm seriously considering going to a private web hosting company and perhaps just uh, posting my audios on you know, my own website or something. And of course, I'll tell everybody, but um, this is... You know, YouTube is, they're, they're, you know, they're talking about the fake news and all this stuff. So, they're going to start seriously censoring. And about 10 years ago, I had a, uh, a website dedicated to goths and uh, people into, interested in the vampirism. And I told them about the blood of Jesus. And, I mean, I had over oh, a quarter million hits on that site, and it just vanished out of Google's listings. Just gone. I mean, I, I could type in the exact name of the website and sometimes it wouldn't even show up. I mean, seriously. So they've been, and that was about 10 years ago, maybe a little less. But um, so I'll keep everybody informed. All right, turn your Bibles to uh, King James Bibles to Galatians chapter 3. Let's take a look. All right, Galatians chapter 3. Oh, let's start verse 26. And I know I've read this many, many times. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, I've pointed this out in church Bible studies that I was invited to, and they say, oh, well, that's spiritual seed. Uh, but the Bible doesn't say that. It says, if you are Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. That means those in Christ are the seed of Abraham. And I've done a lot of studies on this. I mean, a lot of studies. So I'm not going to go into it with this one. I've got like several hundred videos, 700, over 700 videos and audios. And uh, if anybody's interested, I'll show you the appropriate spot. But, you know... It's interesting, all the promises that God made to Israel 
are basically fulfilled in the people of Europe. You know, who printed the Bibles in English, in German, French, Italian, Spanish? Who? Not Africa, not Asia, not China, not Japan, not India. No. Who built the churches? Think about it. Not Africa, not Japan, not China, not India. No. Europeans did. And the Europeans that came to America. And the thing is, if we are Israel, and I think we are, it's the churches that are hiding this truth from the people. They're hiding this, well, for two reasons. One, they want you to believe that the Antichrist, the Israelis over in the Middle East, are the true chosen people of God. You know, the, the ones that actually hate Jesus Christ, the ones that call him the bastard son of a whore, a prostitute named Mary. Um, depending upon which rabbi you listen to, she was either impregnated by a Roman soldier, Pantera, who paid her, or other rabbis say that Mary was impregnated by a fallen angel named Samael. Some attribute him to Satan, others say he's a, one of Satan's generals. I don't know. Uh, take your pick of which rabbi you want to support. Excuse me, I had to take a break for a minute there. So what are the theological implications of the people of Europe, the people who have traditionally carried Christianity? What are the theological implications of if they are Israel? Well, if they are Israel, then all the blessings for keeping the laws of the Bible are valid. And all the curses for not keeping the laws are valid. Okay, now there's three different sets of laws. There were the ceremonial, the Le Levitical, sacrificial laws that were done at the temple. Those were nailed to the cross. Okay, they were fulfilled in Christ. Christ paid the penalty. He was the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. That law was fulfilled. It was paid in full. But then you have the moral laws, which are the Ten Commandments, which I don't, those I do not believe were nailed to the cross. And then you have the governmental laws, the laws for the king, the laws that the for example, it says witches were to be put to death, saucers put to death, which is a male witch, uh, sodomites were to be put to death. Instead, we elect them to Congress and bake cakes for them for their sodomite marriages. Do you? So, you know, that's the thing. Is America under God's blessing or under God's curse? Well, if you've read the entire Bible, you will know that we are under God's curse. So, why do they hide the fact that the Christians are Israel? Well, identity theft. They want you to think that some of the people that John the Baptist called vipers, and that Jesus called the children of the devil, are God's chosen people. Well, let's take a look in John chapter 10, starting in verse 23. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Now, this is the, the temple. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. They're asking him, If you're the Messiah, just say it. Tell us plainly. You know, don't, don't beat around the bush. If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye 
believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Huh. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Well, do you hear the voice of Christ? Are you his sheep? Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. All right, turn your King James Bible to Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Let's go to Luke chapter 7 and verse 28. See what Jesus said about John the Baptist. <clears throat> For I say unto you, Among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Wow. How's that for a testimony? I, I You know, <laughs> I tell you what, I wouldn't mind having Jesus say that about, you know, me, but uh, he's not going to be saying that about me because I guarantee you I'm no John the Baptist. Among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So let's go back to Matthew chapter 3. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And you know that word repent, They've, uh, they're actually trying to remove repentance from salvation. So many famous preachers are saying, oh, well, you know, just repent of your unbelief and just keep living the life you're living now and just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you know, in James chapter 2, the Bible says, Believest thou in one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. The devil believes in God, but you know what the difference is? People should repent of their sins and turn from their wickedness. And there's people actually preaching that we don't have to do that. Oh, don't, don't, don't turn away from your sins. You know? And this is the point of what difference does it make if we are Israel? They don't want you to read the Old Testament and, and believe what it says, where, 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 where it says, well, let's take a look at something, and we'll get back to John the Baptist. Here we go, Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. If my people, if my people, are Christians his people? Are we the children of Israel? Are we his people? God said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Pray, seek his face, and turn, turn from their wicked ways. Oh, oh, they'll tell you, oh, well, just, God just wants you to repent of your unbelief. No, he says, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Oh, wait a minute. Well, what do we got to do? We got to humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, and turn from our wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. That ain't going to happen, people, if you don't humble yourself you don't pray, if you don't seek his face, and you don't turn from your wicked way, he's not going to hear you. Oh, but just repent of your unbelief. Don't repent of your sin. People, when you get saved, 
You're going to repent of your sin. What does the Bible say about repentance? Matthew 9.13 But go ye and learn what this meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Oh, so God's calling sinners to un their unbelief to become belief? No, he says, I'm, I'm not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Huh. God wants sinners to have repentance, not the righteous. Those that keep the laws don't need to repent. But we're all guilty of breaking the law. We're all guilty. Romans 2 and verse 4. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Huh. It is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. In 2 Peter verse 3 and verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All right, so, back to Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, that's Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Raiment is clothing. He had clothing that was camel's hair. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Oh, I thought they were confessing their unbelief. Now, if you don't know it, a Pharisee, according to the Jewish Encyclopedia, modern Ju Judaism is di a direct descendant from Pharisees, the Phariseeism. Now, the Sadducees were the priests that uh, did the temple sacrifices. So remember that. They had differences. The Pharisees believed in an afterlife and they believed in angels, whereas the Sadducees only accepted the five books of Moses. They only accepted Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Leviticus was the book that explained how to do the t sacrifices. Okay? The Sadducees didn't accept the Psalms. They didn't accept Isaiah. They didn't accept Ezekiel. They didn't accept Jonah, none of those books. Nope. If it's not in the book of Leviticus or Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, we don't believe it. That's the Sadducees. Verse 7. But when he, who's he? John the Baptist. But when he saw many, not all, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees, just remember, Pharisees and Sadducees are all Jews. Okay, you've got Baptists, you've got Pentecostals, you've got Lutherans, um, you know, there's Christians in all those denominations, even though they don't all believe the same thing. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, do you know what a viper is? It's a poisonous snake. O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? You know, it's interesting. The New Testament was written in Greek. 
And if you look at the word generation, O oh, generation of vipers, the word gene is in there, G-E-N-E, -E, as in genetics. That's where it comes from, people. A lot of medical terms come from the Greek. Matter of fact, uh, mo uh, m uh, most of it does. And that's where they got it from. Gene, genetics. When he says, oh, generation of vipers, he's cause, talking about a race, a group of people. You know, when rattlesnakes have children, they don't have rabbits. Okay? And when dogs have puppies, they're not crows or bluebirds. And, and butterflies don't give birth to scorpions. You know, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. Now this right here should tell you that repentance doesn't mean repenting of your unbelief. The Pharisees and the Sadducees both believed in God. John's telling them to bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. Bring forth good works that shows you repent of your wickedness, people. That's what he's telling them here. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire whose fan is in his hand and will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. How's that for a warning? Uh, oh, yeah, these are, these are God's chosen people. Right. Churches exist to hide the truth. Sure, they want to get members because the more members is they'll they'll preach on tithing. Oh yeah, give God a blessing. Bring your money into the your tithe into the church. Praise a Jesus. Send us your donation. That's what they're all about. But then when you start reading the Bible and you start asking questions that are plain as day, they'll oh well, you know, that's for the Jews. And, and, and we're not we're not Jews, so that doesn't apply to us. We're the New Testament church. We're not Israel. Well, guess what? If we are Israel, all the Old Testament curses are coming upon us. Think about it, people. Now, please understand something. There are what you call Orthodox Jews. And they only accept the authority of what they call the Tanakh, which is the what we call the Old Testament. They are is a very small group of them, and they reject the Talmud, they reject the Kabbalah. But if you look up Orthodox Jews, well, the great majority of people that call themselves Orthodox Jews is the uh, Lubavitch movement, L-U-B-A-V-I-T-C-H, they practice what is called the Kabbalah, K-A-B-B-A-L-A-H. It's spelled several different ways. Sometimes it's spelled with a Q at the beginning and sometimes with a C at the beginning, which is basically magic, Satanism, and witchcraft masquerading as Judaism. And believe me, it came out of Babylon. And... Sadly, those kind of people always end up in leadership positions. Well, you know, Satan always takes care of his own, right? But let's see what Jesus had to say about this kind of stuff. Now, 
remember, the Jewish Encyclopedia says modern Judaism is a direct descendant of Phariseeism. They have a thing called the Talmud, T-A-L-M-U-D, and it came from Babylon. Matter of fact, it's called the Babylonian Talmud. And Talmud means learning. So when, they, when you say the Babylonian Talmud, you're talking about Babylonian learning. Think about that next time you read about Mystery Babylon, the Great. I guess we're going to read Matthew 23. Oh, I've read this stuff so much. I could almost say it by heart. But. Then spake Jesus to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Now, the scribes were the copyists. Uh, they, they hand copied the Bible because they didn't have a printing press back then to print books. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not do ye after their works. In other words, when they tell you to do something, do it, but don't do what they do. Uh, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. Oh yeah, when they do something, it's to be so they can become famous. It's just like all these multi-millionaires, these billionaires. You know, they, uh, they go to these big charity events, and they write a big donation. But they only do it for a tax write-off, and so that, you know, the movie, or the, the TV and movie crowd will, you know, take their pictures and plaster it on the paper. Oh, look what this wonderful multi-billionaire did to help, help people. So he writes a multi-million dollar check to a foundation that pays its CEOs millions of dollars, and pennies, if anything, goes to the uh, to help the less fortunate. You know, it's like the Red Cross. I mean, uh, the 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 people at the top make millions, and I've never met anybody that's ever been helped by the Red Cross or the United Way. Never. I've met people that have been turned away by them. Oh, sorry, we don't have any money. Meanwhile, the director makes over a million dollars a year. Of course you don't have any money. You gave it all to the people running the show. What can I tell you? Yeah, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be ye not called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. So, Bible tells you, tell this to these Hebrew roots people whose, whose pastor calls himself Rabbi. And it doesn't mean teacher. According to this, it means master. But be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And here's one for the Catholics. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Hmm. Remember, even Christ... Uh, washed the feet of the disciples just before he went to die on the cross. I mean, he, he served. He served us. Shouldn't we serve him? Verse 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You see, the the Orthodox Jews that believe the Bible, that reject the Talmud and the Kabbalah and all this stuff, they're a very tiny minority. And they're persecuted by these very people. 
that Jesus is talking about. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer, or allow, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Do you know that there's damnation? And then there's a greater damnation. I don't think I want to find out what that is. What do you, what, what do you say? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land, and make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye have made him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Think about that the next time you hear Hebrew roots people and they're Yeshua and, and, and you know. He said you make him twice the child of hell. That's what twofold means. You've made him twice the child of hell than you are. Verse 16. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whither is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. Whosoever, whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it and by all things thereon. And whoso, whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Judgment mercy, and faith. See, those things are important. When we're talking about judgment, they're talking about giving a fair shake to the poor against the rich that oppress them. You know, that's what he's talking about with judgment. And then mercy and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Boy, he sure uses that word a lot. Hypocrites, doesn't he? For ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee! You could, you could substitute the word Jew there. I mean, Jews say they are the Pharisees, modern Pharisees. Today, thou blind Pharisee, cleanse First, that which is within the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. How many times did Jesus say that word, hypocrites? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so ye are all... ye. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Boy, he sure did that word again. Oh, and for those of you that don't know it, the Jewish Encyclopedia says that Jesus of Nazareth, they call him Yeshua, I'm, I'm sorry, Yeshu, Y-E-S-H-U, um, which means, may his name be blotted out from under heaven. They claim that he is the greatest, most evil, vile, anti-Semite that ever lived. Think about that next time you get called an anti-Semite. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Verse 29. Because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourself, 
that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Think about that next time you read about how Mystery Babylon killed the prophets. It wasn't Rome, people. It wasn't London. It wasn't New York City. And it wasn't Mecca. Verse 32. That ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. Now, oh, here's Jesus saying the same thing that John the Baptist said. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues mm, and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed, up, shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Archias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. That means empty. There, the, the house of the Judaism is empty. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Does this sound like uh, modern day Judaism is God's chosen people? Now, obviously, Jesus wasn't talking about all the Jews because a lot of the Jews uh, got saved in Jesus' day. And occasionally, a few get saved today. So, Jesus warned that there would be tares, or weeds, among the wheat. And the tares are going to be burned in the fire, and the wheat is going to be gathered into his barn. He's going to separate the sheep from the goats. Now, if we are Israel, okay, what are the theological implications? Well, the blessings for obedience, the curses for disobedience. You want to read that? Turn to your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 26. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way, which I command you this day, to go after other gods which ye have not known. Hmm. So, you see, the, the churches hide the fact that we are God's chosen people. And they want you to think that those that hate Jesus, that are by Bible definition antichrist, and if you don't think the Jews are Antichrist, call two or three local synagogues and ask them if Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. And if they say, well, what they do is they'll say, well, you know, we think he's a good man, but no, we don't think he's the Messiah. Well, wait a minute. He, he told them he was the Messiah. And if they don't believe him, how can he be a good man? He told them he was 
the son of God. How could he be a good man? Either he's a good man and he was telling the truth, or he's a liar. I mean, there's only two ways about it. And and if, if they say he's a good man, well, then they ought to believe him and follow him. But no, they don't. They deny that Jesus is the Christ or the Messiah. That makes them anti-Christ. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 22, well, verse 21, I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Oh, but they'll tell you, well, you know, Jews... Jews believe in the Father, it's just that they just don't believe in the Son. But what does the verse, next verse say? Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. So if you deny the Son, you don't have the Father either. Because the Father sent the Son. How can you have the Father without the Son? The Father sent the Son. He was able to do all these miracles as a witness. He raised the dead. Even the Jews in their writings of the Talmud admit that Jesus performed miracle after miracle after miracle. But they say he did it by the power of witchcraft and Satan and Kabbalah. Not by the power of God. And guess what? They attributed the works of God by the Holy Spirit to the works of the devil. And guess what? The Bible says that's the unpardonable sin. Maybe that's why the Jews cannot hear the gospel. But we'll get to that in a minute. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Okay, Mark chapter 3, verse 22. And the scribes which came down from Rome? No. And the scribes which came down from New York City? No. London? No. Mecca? No. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub. Who? Jesus. They're talking about Jesus. He hath Beelzebub. And by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. And he, Jesus, and he called them unto him and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And, a house, and if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said, He hath an unclean spirit. They accused Jesus of having a devil, of being possessed by demons or devils, and doing his miracles by the power of Satan. There you go, right there. That's why Jews don't hear the gospel. Eternal damnation, no forgiveness, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. So basically Jesus warned that there was wheat, that there was wheat and that there was tares. There were sheep and then there were goats. And the wheat hides among the, the, the tares, the weeds hide among the wheat. So Jesus said by their fruits, 
ye shall know them by what they do. So that's how we're supposed to figure out who's who. Now, Genesis chapter 32. Jacob is wrestling with an angel. And in verse uh, chapter 32, verse 26. And he said, well, this is the, the angel. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, and Jacob, and he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. So here it is. Jacob's name is going to be changed to Israel, which basically means rules with God, or prince, you know, prince with God. Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. All right? So, if Christians are Israel... What are the theological implications? Well, let's take a look. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 30, starting in verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying... Now, the book of Jeremiah is a book of rebuke and judgment against Israel, his people, for disobedience. I mean, I will guarantee you, Ancient Israel then and the America and Europe now are no different. No different at all. And the, the Baptists will want you to believe in dispensational theology where it says, well, God deals with people in different time periods in different ways. The Bible says, you know, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe that's in Hebrews. He's a, you know, God doesn't deal with people in different ways, in different time periods. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah, I was right. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Oh, but, but my Baptist preacher told me that God deals with mankind in different ways in different time periods. Well, that's because he's a liar, or he was taught wrong, and he believes Bible college more than he believes the Holy Spirit in the Bible. Jeremiah. I hate reading Jeremiah. It's God's judgment on Israel. It's horrible. Their, but their wickedness was their correction. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel. Jacob, people, is Israel. Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity, slavery, I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. See, Israel and Judah are not the same thing. Israel had 12 sons, the 12 tribes. Judah was only one of them. Judah was promised to be the tribe of the kings. That's where Christ came from. Levi was the priest tribe. They were to serve the Lord in the temple. I've said it many times, but I say it again. For new listeners. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travel with child? Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. 
but he shall be saved out of it. You see, this is one of the reasons. When you read about the time of Jacob's trouble, Matthew 24, uh, the plagues of Revelation, the tribulation, the great tribulation, the preachers hide the truth from you. Oh, well, you know, the Jews are Israel, and, and we're the church, so we're not the same thing. And, and besides, they're going to be a pre-trib rapture. We ain't going to be here. Well, if we are Israel, we are going to be here. We're going to be the object of the wrath of Satan. That's the way it's always been, people. Go to talk to the people in Greece who know their history of their church. You know, the people that gave us the New Testament in Greek, which is what it was written in. Ask them the history of their church and their people. They have suffered horrible persecution for hundreds and hundreds of years. Almost, almost 2,000 years they've suffered horrible persecution because of because of the, the, the gospel, the testimony of Jesus. Perhaps you've heard of the country Turkey. That used to be called Greece until the, the Muslim Ottoman Turks came and slaughtered all the Christians in that place. And then they took it over. Tell the Greeks about how the pre-trib rapture. And they will just walk away from you because they, they know that you're an idiot. Don't talk to them about the pre-trib rapture. Don't talk to the church in Russia under communism, under Joseph Stalin, where many, many millions, at least 30 to 40 million Christians were murdered for their faith in Christ. Tell them about the pre-trib rapture. Oh, that's right, you can't. They were killed. They're dead. Oh, God would never beat up his bride. Yeah. Well, the Bible says that judgment begins at the house of God. Oh, yeah. Jeremiah 13, verse 8. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore fear not, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the day from oh, I'm sorry, from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. Oh yeah, you're going to be punished. Judgment begins at the house of God, people. For thus saith the Lord, Thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. Therefore, I'm sorry, there is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up, Thou hast no healing medicines. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not, for I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Oh, that's America today, isn't it? Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. For I will restore health unto thee, and will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, There is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on his dwelling places, and the city shall be builded upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. 
and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. The, their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them, and I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach, approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me, saith the Lord? And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury. A continuing whirlwind, it shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. If you don't know what a whirlwind is, think hurricanes, think tornadoes. Verse 24. The fierce anger of the, anger of the Lord shall not return until he hath done it and until he hath performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days, in the latter days, ye shall consider it. People, the time of Jacob's trouble is coming upon us, the church. And that's why the churches hide this from you. That's why they preach the pre-trib rapture. They want everybody to lose their faith. They want you to worship the beast of Revelation, the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. They want you to deny Jesus. Matter of fact, the Yeshua crowd already denies Jesus. The word Yeshua doesn't appear in the New Testament anywhere. Why are you taking an Old Testament name... In Hebrew, where there was no salvation in the Old Testament, and applying it to the New Testament. The New Testament was the better covenant. Why? You know why the Yeshua crowd is, is doing this garbage? John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, what name? Jesus, not Yeshua. Then whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Of course, you know, he wants you to ask for things that he wants you to have. You know, he doesn't want you to have a house full of whores to fornicate with every night, you know. You know, that's the thing. They do everything to separate us from the whole Bible is your book. The whole thing. The blessings, the curses. They don't want us to know who we are. Our covenant with the Father through Christ his Son. They want you to think that the Antichrist over in the Middle East, that they're the chosen people. Turn to 2 Chronicles verse 19 and verse 2. Now, I've read this many times, but you've got to realize, sometimes I get new people um, that aren't familiar with my work. And Jehu, the son of Henani, the seer, seer is a prophet, the seer went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat was a good king. Okay, that's Second Chronicles 19, verse 2. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Good question. Should we help the ungodly and love those that hate the Lord? Uh, is Jesus Christ Lord? Well, the Bible says he is. So, should we love those that hate Jesus? Hmm. Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath, anger, therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. You see, when you love those that hate the Lord, 
Isn't God's wrath going to be upon you? You know, all those people that support John Hagee, John Hagee actually says that the Israelis, it's good for them to kill the, the Palestinians, many of whom are Christians, by the way. Because he says, oh, well, they're the Philistines, and God told Israel, God told Israel to kill the Philistines, and they're just doing what God told them to do. Praise the Jesus. Uh, send me your donation. You know, I'm looking forward to the day when John Hagee meets Jesus. I'm looking forward to that day. I hope I have a big old thing of popcorn and I get to sit there and watch like a movie. Not that I'm righteous, no. I have many things to, re to be sorrowful for. I spent my first half my life serving Satan. And I spent many years, even though I believed in the Lord, many years I was lukewarm and didn't serve. I didn't do what I should have been doing. But you know what? Supporting people that are killing Christians sounds pretty evil to me. Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. Well, are you his sheep? And I'm telling you, people, the churches hide the truth. They think those that hate Jesus are God's chosen people. They think that those that love Jesus are just a bunch of Gentiles saved by grace. And they'll teach you to ignore 75% of the Bible called the Old Testament. And you can't even understand the New Testament very well if you never read the old. I mean, let's face it, all the symbolism out in the book of Revelation, a great deal of it comes from the Old Testament. Most of it does. Most of the, How can you understand the symbolism when it takes you back to the Old Testament to interpret it? You can't. Preachers, for the most part, are either deceived or deceivers. And all they care about is their, their 501c3 business called a church and making money. That's it. So if I, um, if I disappear from YouTube, uh, take a look on some search engines. Not necessarily Google. Try MSN. Try Yahoo. Uh, I'm going to be probably on a website by myself. And just remember, Google loves to uh, delete listings of things that they don't like. I found excellent websites and looked in Google's listings for the same site, and it's gone. And then when I type in the exact address in my browser, I find the site. So they delete listings. All right, people. Well, you know... This is Bob, Ch uh, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, who is Jesus, Lamb slain before the foundation of the world, in Jesus' name, amen.